Hey there folks, this is being recorded New Year's Eve 2018, so if you're watching this in February, happy belated, happy new year. Watching Wreck-It Ralph 2, or Wreck-It Ralph Breaks the Internet, or Ralph Breaks the Internet, it's been six years since we last saw Ralph and Vanellope, and it's going to be interesting to see what they can do to progress the story and the characters, and from what I understand, my boy, Sonic the Hedgehog has an even greater role in this than he did last time. Because last time all he had was like a few speaking lines and a few non-speaking cameo appearances, but it is what it is. So I'll be interested to see what they can do with this. But in two hours, we'll find out if Ralph does indeed break the internet. Well... This is the spoiler review, so if you've come onto this thinking that this is the spoiler free, I'll give you five seconds just to stop the video and click off the link, so that you may go to the spoiler free link in the review below. Okay. Well, I'm going to say for writing, uh, this one is not as strong as its predecessor. Wreck-It Ralph, which it's been six years since that movie showed up, and, you know, Wreck-It Ralph as both a Disney movie and a movie about video games, it was a breath of fresh air. Although it's, although you could argue Wreck-It Ralph was based on, was a, a loose pun on Donkey Kong, but, you know, it became its own thing. Um, I feel like with the writing... The, you, the characters are still the characters that you love and recognize, but I feel like in some weird way, it's, for Ralph, it's kind of repeating the first movie again. You know, coming to grips with, with his own insecurities about how he doesn't really want to be the bad guy anymore like it was in the first movie. With this, he is going through his own insecurities in the fact that he's worried that Vanellope is just going to straight up leave him as a friend. And I wouldn't necessarily say that they were friends per se in this movie. It's more like a brother and sister, father and daughter, or uncle and niece dynamic that they've got going on. There is a buddy-buddy thing to them, but I feel like it's more of a familial bond that they share between them, considering Vanellope actually does say towards the end of the movie when she chooses to remain in Slaughter Race online, you know, she's going to miss him and that she loves him. And I think it's done in a very... Um, like, almost like a close sibling or parent-child dynamic. And, you know, one of the few things that I can't say anything bad about is that John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman, their chemistry is as perfect as ever. If anything, I feel like this is more like Vanellope, Vanellope's movie, because... You get the sense with this one is that she wants to break out of her comfort zone and she wants to explore and grow and develop as a person, which, you know, that's a natural thing for any person in life, because at some stage you want to move on, you want to try new things, and, you know, that's where in life, fiction and reality, they both match. You want to see the characters develop, and at the same time, you also want to develop and grow and extend yourself as a person. So, it's art imitating life and life imitating art. Within that same instance, they match. And I like that aspect of it. Although I find it a little bit interesting that, you know, you get all these corporate logos like Google, Amazon, YouTube, Twitter, and various other, uh, you know, and even eBay, 
but when they deal with a video web um, sharing site, instead of YouTube, it's BuzzTube, which is obviously a play on BuzzFeed and YouTube. Uh, I've never been on BuzzFeed, but I don't hear good things about it. Other people's, you know, voices of opinion, not mine. I've just always been told as friendly advice, don't go there. So, their words, not mine. Staying out of the argument. Animation-wise, oh, I'll get to that. No, no, in a minute. One little thing I wasn't particularly too fond of was the fact that um, Fix It Felix and Jane Lynch's character. There's a dynamic setup at the beginning when the rest of the Sugar Rush characters are left homeless because of the fact that their game was going to be unplugged. And they kind of have this thing where they adopt them. But it's only ever revisited at the end of the movie. Because the major cause in fact, the majority of this movie is just focusing on Ralph and Vanellope going to eBay, getting her new steering wheel or her new steering wheel order just so that her game won't be unplugged and she won't be homeless and she you know, won't, and so that she won't have any, pur any purpose. But she kind of finds her purpose with Slaughter Race because it's giving her what Sugar Rush wouldn't do. It would offer her new challenges and what have you. Um, there's not really much more I could say for writing. I mean, I like the fact that it plays with the, the aspect of wanting to break free of your boundaries and try new things. And, that, you know, it, it does that well. And this is one of those times where I feel like Ralph should have been backhanded in the story and at the same time you feel sympathy because he's the one who willingly goes to put a virus in Slaughter Race just because he doesn't want to see Vanellope leave him as a friend. Yet at the same time, you know, you, you sympathize with the fact that nobody wants to see your best friend leave. But at the same time, you know, you got to let your friend be able to do as they want to. Um, and it's true what they say in this is that your friendship can grow stronger just by staying in contact and take look, you know, we're not going to stop being friends. It's just a case of you got to respect them enough to try new things, which is, you know, exactly what they say in there. And, yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think it's a good moral uh, and helpful lesson because there are, you know, friends that we've had from, from childhood years, school years, and college years that, you know, we, we don't want to... Uh, grow apart from, but they've got dreams and aspirations that they want to get on with in life, and so do you. And it's important to allow them the freedom to have that, but still have that that bond and connection that whenever you do come back together and meet up, it's like you've never been apart. So, I like that aspect of the writing, but there are a whole bunch of other things that I felt could have been addressed more thoroughly. I felt like there were some aspects of it that they just went through the motions or just didn't bother to actually put enough time into the writing. And one of the other few... <laughs> uh, one of the few other saving graces, my boy, Sonic the Hedgehog, with Roger Craig Smith uh, reprising his role once more. Only this time, I felt like, um, you know, they gave him a lot more to work with. And to Roger's credit, I think he made better use of the time he had uh, for the sequel. Because of the sequel, because with the original, he was only a, um, a you know, an infomercial on, on an animation poster within the uh, the hub part and it's just this interesting thing of seeing 
Sonic as part of a book club. Um, I've seen just about most iterations of Sonic the Hedgehog, whether it's the Satem series, it is the best one of all, my opinion. Adventures of Sonic Underground, the OVA, um, Sonic Boom. And of course, the iconic Fleetway and Archie series, which Archie I'm still getting into for ordering back issues. But in almost all of those, never once have I seen Sonic as part of a book club. But, you know, there's always room to try something new. So, I liked that. Writing, uh, uh, I'm going to wrap sincerely round this, this up for writing, because I know I'm kind of drowning, you know, plodding this out a little too much. Writing is not, as, is not as good as the original, but it's satisfying. I wouldn't say it was as groundbreaking as Wreck-It Ralph, but you, you'll walk away feeling like you got your money's worth. And I think that's fair. <sighs> Casting wise, I mean, John C. Riley, he nails it as he often as he did before. Uh, Sarah Silverman, she's as sweet and adorable as ever as Vanellope. I was really surprised to hear Alfred Molina. Uh, being a voice actor in this, where the only thing, the only things I've associated with him more is either being uh, the scientist that gets whacked by Sill in uh, Species from 1995, or as uh, Dr. Otto Octavius from Spider-Man 2, and, you know, that movie still, uh, still amazing to this day. See what I did there. But to hear it with this uh, really strong, uh, exaggerated Cockney accent as this obvious pun on Jabba the Hutt from the, the uh, visual design that they went for the character, I thought he was great for that. Uh, Roger Craig Smith, as I mentioned earlier, coming back to reprise his role as Sonic. Uh, I was so glad to hear that. All the Disney princesses, I don't know if they are the same uh, voice actresses that had voiced the characters before. Snow White, I think it's obviously going to be a sound alike because I don't think the original uh, voice actress is around. But yeah, it does actually look like um, most of the most of the same uh, voice actresses from before. So, you know, to hear Jodie Benson still playing Ariel after what, nearly 30 years? It's like, hey, uh, that's dedication. Mandy Moore is is back. I don't know if Paige O'Hara is the same one from um, the original Beauty and the Beast. But to... Uh, and Kristen Bell as Anna, it's like, okay. Um, okay, Disney, I'll uh, I'll give you props for that. That that's That is attention to detail. I I was actually not expecting that. And to hear Tim Allen uh, giving a cameo as uh, as Buzz Lightyear, that was cool. Although, I know I'm going out on the limb here, but it would just been so cool in the one little segment you see the Iron Man suit. It just would have been great just to hear Robert Downey Jr. go, I am Iron Man. And, you know, and then just flies off for no apparent reason. That That would have been cool, but... Yeah, I don't think there was anybody that phoned it in with, you know, with the voice acting. I feel like, well, they actually had Vin Diesel. Nice. But no, I think um, everybody performed excellently and what have you. So, I, I really can't fault anything. With the, with the acting, because when you have stunt casting like that, with the, you know, a smorgasbord of references to previous Disney movies, and, you know, like I say, my boy, Sonic, coming back in once more, it's just like, 
voice acting gets a 10. It's probably one of the few things that will get a perfect score. But yeah, voice acting gets a 10. Uh, the score. Hmm. This is one of the other few aspects that I feel like you couldn't really perfect it any better. Henry Jackman just knocked out a decent ensemble piece for this movie that conveyed the right levels of tension, betrayal, sadness, triumph, and, you know, just these nice uh, feel-good moments. Whether we'll get a another score for what happens with a potential third movie, I don't know. I will say one thing, though. Don't make us wait six years again. That's all I'm going to say, Disney. Uh, we like it to sort of not be that length. You know, don't do a... Um, don't do a Tron legacy on us. Although I like the fact that Tron did get a mention with this. So in this in this movie, almost said this game. <laughs> wouldn't that have been wouldn't that have been silly? But yeah, score perfect ten. As for the art style, um, I'm gonna have to give the you know um, the art direction a perfect ten as well because. It's building upon what happened with the last movie. I think this the the CG and the graphics is just as amazing as it was before, if not better. And the uh, but the only thing that lets it down is just as like I say, the writing is it's satisfying. It's not amazing. It's not great, but it's satisfying. But yeah, art just gets a ten. Perfect. Hmm. Like I pretty much said, I think had the writing just been polished that little bit more, I would give this movie... I would have given it a must, but it's just going to get a very low dang that was good and a very strong... Good flick bargain. But if I have to settle on one, I'm just going to say good flick bargain. Because it's a very satisfying movie. I'm not going to lie. But there were just some bits and pieces that I felt was kind of copying elements from the first movie. With Ralph's insecurities and what have you. And the whole point when you go from... When you transition from the original to a sequel is... You have... You have some elements that remind you of the first movie, but doesn't repeat that. Because Ralph's whole shtick in the first movie was to be a hero, and not to be the bad guy. And he was just insecure about it. Whereas with this one, he's traded one insecurity for another. And... yeah... <laughs> But other than that, you know, like I say, it was a satisfying movie. Oh, Gal Gadot was in this. Well, that was cool. It's a satisfying movie. I probably will order that pre-order this one because, you know, I enjoyed the last one. But it's very rare when a sequel outdoes the original. It's... I feel like, to this day, the only one that has ever done that is Spider-Man 2. Now, whilst the first Spider-Man is still amazing... It's twice I've done that now. It's still good even by today's standards. The second movie in the Raimi trilogy is head and shoulders above uh, all the other Spider-Man movie that have followed. The other thing... <laughs> you know, I appreciate uh, they were doing like this whole meme um, culture, I suppose, for lack of a better description. But what the heck, Disney? It's like, did you have to make Ralph do the whole Rick Roll shtick? It's like, ten years on and I'm still getting Rick Rolled. You couldn't have left this out of the movie. But, yeah. 
I'm just looking at this thinking, you know, I'm sat in the, in the credit, you know, watching the credits, thinking, oh, okay. And they're, doo-doo-doo-doo, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> it's like, why? You know, do jokes, by all means, but a Rickroll? <laughs> it's like, I love 2008, but 2008 was 10 years ago. Mind you, TV was better then, but that's not saying much. Come on, TV. You know you were better then. <sighs> I've rambled on long enough. Um, a good movie, but not as good as the first one.